we've talked about some charts for quantitative data, data that are numbers that represent counts or measurements. The Pareto chart is a chart we can use when we have qualitative data or categorical data. Just an another name for qualitative is just another name here for categorical data. These are data that fall into categories. These are not numbers that represent counts or measurements. And the Pareto chart's based on the Pareto principle, which states that 80% of the problems come from 20% of the causes. So it's useful for an organization or a company to determine what those 20% of those causes are. What are these? Let's identify those because if we can make changes and, and fix these, we've fixed 80% of our problem. So the chart is a series of bars, vertical bars, whose heights reflect the frequency, and they're arranged in order. Unlike a histogram, a histogram uses numbers, so the order has to do with the uh, actual numbers along the horizontal axis. But now we're just talking about categories, so we can put them in any order we like, and the way we do a Pareto chart is we arrange them in descending order based on the height from left to right. So therefore, the categories that are represented by the tall bars that are on the left show us which categories are more significant than, the tho than those on the right. And what we're doing here is separating the vital few from the trivial many. So an organization or a business can have many, many different issues that cause losses in quality or productivity, but only a few of those are really contributing to the problem. So we want to identify those and use our resources well to solve the problem. And that's what a Pareto chart can help you do. So let's look at an example. In this example, we've looked at reasons for the delay in processing credit card applications. So uh, a certain number of credit card applications have been uh, pulled and we've looked at the reasons they were delayed. So these are the different categories identified and how many of those 94 fell into each one. So the category of no address on the application, there were nine of those. Illegible, there were 22. Current customer, there were 15. No signature, there were 40, and then they had this catch-all um, category where 8 fell. And I, that current customer would be uh, perhaps someone who um, was applying not realizing they had already applied before, or maybe they were trying to make a change but not doing it the proper way using a new application rather than some other application. But it, it was delayed because that was confusing to the system. Okay. So what we want to do first is reorder the data with the highest frequency category first to the lowest frequency category. So let's do that. So our highest frequency category was no signature. And the frequency there was 40. Our next category was illegible. And we had 22 of those. The next was current customer. Fifteen of those. Then no address. And there were nine. And then that catch-all other category and we had eight of those and that was our 94 applications. So what we want to do for our Pareto chart was de is determine the relative frequency of each one of these. And remember this is the percentage represented by each category. So we determine that by saying, well, 40 out of 94 times 100, what percent of the total does the no signature category represent? It represents 43%. And then 22 out of the total of 94, what percentage of, is this? And that comes out to 23%. Of course, I'm rounding here. Uh, 15 out of 94 times 100, and that one came out to 16%. 
9 out of 94 times 100, about 10%, and 8 out of 94 times 100. And that one, about 8%. It was right on the border of 8 and 9. But I noticed that um, to get my 100% here, this one was right on the edge, and by rounding up, I would have had 101%. It's not going to be exact because you'll probably do some rounding. Um, but this one was the closest, really, to the lower value of 8%. So now we've got our 100%. And another thing I need here is the cumulative frequency. In here, what we take is our, the first category is 43%. It's the, the, that current category plus the sum of all previous, but there's nothing previous to the first category. The next one would be 23% plus the sum of all previous, which is 43. So here we have 66%. And then we have 16% plus the sum of all previous, and we get, what, 82%? And then 10% plus the sum of all previous. And finally, 8% plus the sum of all previous. And we should be right at 100% here. That's what makes sense. Like, again, rounding might cause us to be slightly above or below that. Okay, now we can take this relative frequency and cumulative frequency in our different categories and create a Pareto diagram. So we'll need a vertical axis and it needs to reach 100. So let's see where that would be. Say so this is 100, 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, so I have to extend a little more, 20, 10, and down here at zero. Okay, a little trouble fitting it on here. Okay, that's our vertical axis, the percentages. I'll just use a percent sign to indicate that. Those are our percentages. And then on our horizontal axis, we'll have our categories. All right, so we start with the first category, which has the highest percentage. That was no signature at, four, at uh, 43%. About 43 would be about right here. And this would be no signature. Okay, our next category was 23% illegible. 23% approximately right here. And these bars should be the same width. I mean, I'm just doing eyeballing this, but that's what they should represent, and they do touch. Uh, current customer was 16%. Let's see, 15 would be about right there, so be about right here. Current customer. Okay, our fourth category was no address, and that was 10%. No address. And finally, other was 8%. Okay, so this gives us the bars, and we can see our highest to lowest. And now let's look at the cumulative percentages. We start with 43. So right at the top of the bar, that's the same 43. We put our first value for no signature. Cumulatively, when we get to illegible, we're at 66. 66, and I'm trying to be right in the middle of the second bar for illegible. 
and then for current customer we're at 82 percent 82 right here above current customer and then for no address 92 percent 92 percent no address and then of course 100 percent is our final for other because now we've accounted for all of the reasons for the delay in credit card applications. So now we connect these dots and we have a line graph showing us how the different reasons contribute to the percentage of the problem. So these are our reasons for delay. Notice these are our categorical data. Alright, so what we said was a Pareto chart helps us identify those 80% of the problems come from 20% of the causes. So that's what we're trying to identify. Okay, and so 80% of our problem we could identify at this point we've accounted for 80% once we get to current customer. So what that tells us is we really want to focus on these first three categories and see if what we can do to improve this. Something about the signature, uh, people who are filling out the application are missing that for some reason. Um, perhaps we're not giving them enough room to write neatly uh, and that's why it's illegible. So, uh, and then maybe some description, better description, so customers know that if they're a current customer and they just want to make changes to their account, maybe they need to use a different um, form. Perhaps it's just confusing for them. So it helps us identify that so that we can reduce the problem. So Pareto chart for categorical data.